Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Tennis Talk. Um, just before we start, I keep forgetting to mention that if, if you like the channel, um, hit the subscribe button and I believe you'll get notifications when these videos are uploaded. Um, so a couple of years ago, I heard of a new tennis club um, being created, I suppose, and obviously we're all used to tennis clubs being in existence for well over 100 years and I always was curious to know what, how did that come about, who had the idea um, and how did the whole thing pan out. So Alison Hand is with us here. She is one of the founding members of Donna Bate Port Rand Tennis Club. Um, it's a couple of years old, Alison will be able to tell us. And um, so hopefully she will be able to guide us through how a concept to, to create a tennis club now has turned into a, a, a thriving tennis club. Uh, so, Ali, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, James. Um, so, and you, you're also currently ladies' captain? I am indeed, yeah. And how are you finding that? It's good. I enjoy it. It's busy. It's, it's very, very busy. And I think as we've grown as a club, uh, it's just got busier, um, so I, I guess at the moment it, it's a little bit quiet, but um, I think when things um, get back to normal at some point, uh, she'll be back on the road again and more work to do. Yeah, yeah. So can I bring you right back to the start? I, I, I've, I kind of imagine somebody just, you know, waking up in the middle of the night thinking, I'm, I'm going to make a tennis club, <laughs> or, or what happened? very far off that uh, to be honest um, I suppose my first encounter or my, my first hearing of it was uh, one of my neighbours uh, who lives around the corner from me um, Donald O'Keefe approached me at, at a meeting one night I can't remember what it was in, in the local hotel and said you play tennis don't you and I said well yeah not regularly I said but would you be interested if there was a tennis club in, in Donald Bates and I'd only moved back I'd, I'd lived outside of Donald Bates for about 13 years and I said, yeah, I'd be really interested. Look, let me know. So about a year later, so I moved back in 2012. So about a year later, there was a knock on the door and it was Donald again. And he wanted to know, uh, would I be interested in being treasurer of the tennis club? And I just sort of said to him, look, you know, if you spoke to my bank manager, he'd say that's probably not a really good uh, position for me to be in any club. Um, but I knew somebody who would be interested. Um, and that was my, my sister-in-law. So I sent him in her direction. And then really, I guess, the next I sort of heard about it, this was around 2013, um, that, uh, you know, a group of people had, had got together, and this included Hugh O'Loughlin, who many people will know as, as a coach, and then Robbie Harold um, as well uh, were involved um, at the very early stages um, in setting up this club. And then one by one, um, a whole sort of group of about 15 of us um, sort of came together and I suppose the well, the idea of the club was already there by the time the whole, I suppose, initial founding committee, founding management committee were there. Um, and really, um, I suppose it was 2014 when we started to, um, not like go public, but, the, but we had information stands in the local Super Value. Um, we had a, sort of an open day in uh, the community centre because the community centre and the community school have actually got uh, tarmac courts, car courts. So, um, can I ask you, were they were they the only courts in the in the area at the time? Yeah, they were the only courts in the area. I mean, way back when, my when my dad and, and his family um, were kids, behind their house there was a field, and in the summer there were a couple of grass tennis courts there, and there were you know they had tournaments and stuff over the summer, but nothing. Um, you know, nothing like what we have now in terms of an actual club. Um, it was purely, I think, it's a bit of a social summer activity, and that would have been back in the sort of late 50s, early 60s. So, yeah, uh, there were a lot of people, I think, who thought we were slightly crazy and that we'd never, um, we'd never get a tennis club up and running. Um, but we did. Uh, and, it, you know, uh, when you were talking to me about maybe having this conversation, I, I sort of went, yeah, you know, we set up a tennis club and it's all good. And I started going back to my emails and my notes and all that sort of stuff over the last seven years. And, you know, 
there's an awful lot of work involved. And it's only when you go back and look over it, you realise actually what, um, you know, what it took to get it to where it is now. Yeah. And so it's it's kind of in in or part of Donabate, Port Ran Golf Club, is that? It, yeah, it's, it's what we what we actually did was um, Donald O'Keefe, who was you know the, the gentleman that originally sort of spoke to me about it. He um, is a member in Donabate Golf Club, and what they were looking to do was you know how could they maybe utilise some of their existing practice area. So um, they've got one which is where the court is now, and they'd won across the road from the golf club. And initially, we had looked at leasing, a uh, long-term lease on the, the site across the road. Um, when we applied for planning, there were a few I suppose, issues around that, having to you know have kids cross the road and stuff like that. So we now, uh, or we, we leased then sort of on the same side as, as the golf club house, uh, which is actually our clubhouse as well, which is fantastic. Um, so we did that. I so the lease was signed by us in in 2015, um, and we'd our our, our our sorry in 2016, and we'd our planning permission granted in 2015. So when you consider that sort of the the genesis of of the club and the idea was sort of mid to late 2013, um, you know that's a whole sort of you know two or more years to actually get to the point where we had a site that we could build courts on. Yeah, and was the golf club always receptive to the idea? Yeah, for the most part. Uh, I mean, they were very interested in getting extra football, um, you know, using the clubhouse facilities, um, and, you know, they were... You know, they were instrumental in many ways in in the conversations that we had. Yeah, and can in in, in terms of oops, sorry raising finance, um, you know, did did you have to raise a lot of money to to get the thing off the ground? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we took the route of the sports capital grant. Um, that the Department of Transport and Tourism offer. Now, the challenge with that is that you do need to have a certain amount of money already in the bank before you can apply for a sports capital grant. So um, some of the, the committee members um, sort of way back when, before even I was involved, um, had come up with a really, really ingenious idea of, you know, this idea of giving 10-year membership um, at a reduced rate so what they did was they opened it up. We had, um, you know, public meetings in 2014, um, which pretty much said, look, folks, this is what we're planning to do. We're setting up a tennis club. And if you want to get in early and get a 10-year membership at a discounted rate, um, we'll do a certain rate for family members, um, you know, a family membership, and then also individual members. And um, we raised 32 and doing that. I, I cut across you there about how much? 32, wow. okay. And, and how much is the membership there for an ordinary adult? Well, that's a really interesting question, James, because <laughs> I'm a 10-year member, so I need to check that out. Okay. Um, yeah, Hang on, I will the, check it out and tell you. Okay. Um, that's a, yeah, that's a great idea. And the... Um, so is it, you, you said it was a sports council... Grant then to kind of yeah, top it up. capital grant was initially what we between the the money. Now we we'd raise that money through. Um, I was looking for or giving this special introductory rate, but we also did bag packs, had really uh, you know amazing social nights, and I have to you know do a big shout out to you know not just our crew here, but Malahide Tennis Club were absolutely fantastic. Um, you know they provided their courts for us to run mixed social uh, tennis, fundraising mixed social tennis events. Um, and it was it was absolutely fantastic to have that facility um, where their members and our members uh, played. So it was, you know, they were really, really helpful to us way back when we, yeah. we hadn't even got anything started. Yeah. And do you, do you guys still have a good relationship? Do you do any kind of events with Malahide? <laughs> We haven't done any events with Malahide in a while. We've had, um, actually, we've had some of the ladies over um, to do sort of, uh, you know, friendly matches uh, every now and then. But, you know, at the moment, it, it's predominantly league. Yeah, yeah. And um, what's the membership like there in, in, in terms of numbers? In terms of 
numbers overall were just over the 400 member mark right. um, and about, about 169, 170 or so of those would be juniors. Okay. And I'm, I'm not just saying this because I have you on at the moment, but uh, there must be something in, in the air in Donabate because any, any Donabate members that come into my tennis shop, they are the nicest people I've ever come across. And then I can nearly tell when they walk through the door, they, they have this kind of smile on their face. And I say, to, I say to myself in my head, they're from Donna Bate. And invariably I'm right. Uh, so what we're, is, we're a nice, I might, we're a nice just bunch of people out, out here. Pardon? We're a nice bunch of people out yeah, here. I think I might have to move out there. Um, and you, you mentioned the coaches. Is there two main coaches, Hugh Lachlan and Robbie... Her. No, Stephen, Mur- Stephen Murta and, and Hugh O'Loughlin do the majority of the coaching. Okay. So Robbie was more involved um, in the, the setting up. Yeah, well, Robbie's, Robbie's, uh, Robbie's our club chairperson and, you know, he's he's fantastic. Um, everywhere, you know, if I'm, I'm going to watch league matches and, and Robbie's there, particularly if you're sort of at a, at a quarterfinal, semifinal, final stage, he knows everybody and everybody knows him. Mm-hmm. Um which is, you know, a fantastic asset to have, um, you know, in the club. Plus, he also knows everything about tennis, which is really useful. Um, you know, when you have when you've got questions about, you know, order of merit and, and whatnot for league matches. Yeah. And are you playing league yourself? Yeah, I played um, for the last couple of years. I've been lady. Well, the, this is my third year as ladies captain. So I tended to make sure everyone gets out to play and I, I typically sub so this winter league is the first full league I've played in about two years and it's it's been brilliant I've really enjoyed it so um, we'd hope and um, I mean there's still obviously you know a semi-final and a final um, to be played at some point they're all called off yeah yeah so um, you know we'd we'd, uh, we'd hope to have have a team in, in, in that final for sure yeah They collected any penance, I think they call it. Any, uh, yeah, any we've. Charges? I mean, we've you know, we're going to celebrate our fourth birthday as a club on in July of this year. And you know, if I look back to 2017, um, we entered um, a, a men's team and a ladies' team in the winter league, for example. Um, and this year, uh, we had. Uh, four ladies teams and two men's teams and next year's lady captain um, will have um, you know a class uh, of what we have um, a two class six a class four and um, you know possibly a class seven team uh, our, our ladies floodlight team last year um, they our first team um, have moved they, they won the floodlight league for class four and they're now in class three so we've a uh, Three, four, and five um, in the Footlights uh, League. Um, our men's team, um, our, our first team, won the Class Six um, Summer League, not last year, but the year before. Um, we have, I think we've probably got about, I don't know, probably about eight or ten pennants okay. so far, which is which is pretty outstanding, and we're, we're moving up in the classes as well. So for a club that's under four years old we've, we've done really really well um, I think we had about 52 members playing leagues last year both both um, men's and, and ladies leagues and when you consider there's a I suppose there's a you know let's say there's about maybe 150 active um, adult players that's a, that's a pretty good number yeah yeah no it's it's a great story and come here do the uh, do, you, do you mingle with the golfers or is there a Big, big, well, we, big... we do, we, we've um, done a few um, sort of joint uh, events, like we have a, we do so many social events and we were a very, very social club, um, you know, typically there's 11 or 12 social tournaments a year, um, a couple of them are, are fundraising tournaments, we did um, a huge weekend of playing Orange last year to raise money for um mental health charities and we do a play in pink tournament to raise money for breast cancer research and our juniors we do an adult and junior tournament uh, every January which um, we raise funds for Peter McFerry Trust Um, through the summer we do um, various um, events sort of one 
one Saturday night a month, um, which usually involves, you know, tennis and then obviously there's food and... Um, one or two drinks. Uh, yeah, and a bit of socialising and music afterwards. Um, the other thing, I mean, we obviously, you know, have our... Have, we do a round robin um, every year. We've had over 100 members sign up for this year, which is, you know, which is fantastic. Um, we do a team tennis event and then, you know, there's the club championships as well. So we're, there, there's so much on all the time. It's a really, it's a really, really busy club. Yeah, yeah. It's, it seems like it's a nice community out there. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's you know, kind of desperate at the moment that there's nothing going on. Um, because for, you know, for, I mean, I suppose, as I said, I moved back and, you know, I grew up here. Um, but Donna Bates had, had grown so much by the time I'd moved back. So I still knew the people I knew when I was growing up, but the, the place had grown. So I've got to know, you know, so many people um, that I would not otherwise have known. And I also know for, you know, a number of members have said that are, are new to the area that, it, uh, you know, it's great. It's so friendly. It's so welcoming. And you can play tennis at, at any level. If you, you know, you want to play league, you can play league. But we have various social uh, tennis uh, sessions every day of the week. So we do a mixed on a Friday night and a mixed on a Monday morning. Um, we have ladies on a Tuesday morning, ladies on a Wednesday evening. We have men's on a Thursday night. We have improvers on a Saturday morning. And we have new members on a Sunday morning. So, you know, and that's all volunteers that, that run those sessions. Yeah. Um, but it, it's fantastic. It's a really, really social club. Yeah. And did... Did you have the discussion when the club was being set up about uh, Tennis Ireland and the uh, the affiliation? I presume you, you, the club is affiliated with Tennis Ireland. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean we are, and um, we got a lot of help from from Tennis Ireland. Um, but I mean, we got awarded the silver club mark in 2017, um, and we had, you know, as I said, we we opened officially in July 2016. Um, so you know, which was again another phenomenal achievement for, for such a young club. Um so we would we've we've done some of their leadership courses, um uh they've you know been out to run sessions and do talks with, with us as well. Yeah, yeah. And we might wrap it up soon, but was mm. there any unusual when this whole thing was going on, the club has been set up, any un- unusual hurdles you had to overcome or any we always try and get us some funny stories here on tennis talk um, uh yeah well i mean yes hurdles funny stories i've lost but not not for broadcast, not for broadcast. <laughs> okay. I'll, keep, I'll keep you i'll keep you on the line for it after <laughs> um but yeah i mean anything like this poses challenges uh you know it's it's it created change there were people who i think thought the original um bunch of us were slightly crazy and you know people did come up to me when i was delivering leaflets when the courts were built, you know, for our, our first open day. Um, you know, they couldn't believe what we'd done and they thought it was absolutely uh, phenomenal uh, to see. Um, you know, we started the court in, in May, in the building in May. I think we turned this out at the beginning of May 2016 and by the 9th of July we had four courts that we could play on. Um, and then we got another sports capital grant and we put in an additional two courts last year so now we have we've got six courts yeah which are which are in use all the time yeah it sounds like it i I wonder now when this whole thing comes down will will more tennis clubs crop up because it's in terms of the coronavirus if it if it sticks around um you know you you, i think we, we might see people less likely to go to gyms or, or sports where there's like up close physical contact so yeah i mean i have to say yeah we were we were really early i think it was you know the winter league group stages were still on when we implemented a, a policy of social distancing um uh, on the court um you know no handshaking anything like that um and our members i have to say were absolutely fantastic in terms of adhering to the measures that we had you know stipulated that, that that needs to be in place i think you know the challenge comes to other areas like gate blocks tennis balls but in terms of social distancing i mean you couldn't you know you can't be much further apart from somebody than when you are in a tennis court it's a, it's a perfect sport for social distancing um 
Yeah, I, you know, I, don't know, so I, I don't know if I'm getting the the tennis ball thing. Like that's what a lot of people are saying. But it's it you know as long as both people wash their hands before a game and after, and, yeah, and after and use new tennis balls. Like without being graphic about it, the the virus would have to be transmitted. You know, on in in a droplet from one player's mouth to the ball, and and somehow get back into the other player's mouth. It's a bit graphic, but I think I think when all this calms down, we're, you know, there'll be risks all over the place. But I think tennis is just the chances of that happening are, are tiny. I, I reckon. Yeah, I think you know it, it. You know, it wasn't a hard decision for us to make to 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 stop play. I mean, you know. It, Yes, we, we have a duty of care to members, but it's also the wider community and, and outside of our community, at the country and, and further afield. So, um, you know, the decision, was, you know, I think it was the right to, the decision for us to make, yeah. but also, you know, Tennis Ireland made it. And, um, you know, I've, I've met people in, in the supermarket car park standing there, you know, two metres away going, I really miss tennis and we only you know, took the decision on Sunday of, of this week. So by the time I think we, we get back to normal, I, I don't think there'll be a quarter of because yeah, it'll be such a rough on to get back out. Yeah. I'm, I'm hearing stories of, of people uh, sneaking off to random little disused courts, you know, in, in behind fields and down laneways and stuff just to get the, <laughs> just to get the tennis fix. Um, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, but look, I think we'll we'll wrap it up. Um, we Ali Ali doesn't want to put everyone else to shame and get ten out of ten in the quiz, so we'll we'll, we'll keep the leaderboard as it no, is. Yeah, if there's no phone a friend, I'm afraid I'm. It, it's just not going to happen. Not going to happen. Okay, okay. Um, look, Ali, thanks, Mel, for joining us, and guys, thanks for listening to this episode. And we'll be back tomorrow with a fitness expert. So, um. Be ready for him. <laughs>